to another episode of Run With. Today I am talking to the fabulous Josh Griffiths. He is the Welsh marathon runner who is heading out to Oregon in July for the World Championships. This is Josh's second World Championships after he qualified in 2017 with a spectacular debut marathon at London. This year he ran an incredible 2.11 in Seville. I catch up with Josh to find out all about his training, how he's preparing for the World Champs and his future plans. Welcome Josh to Run With. Uh, today we're going to talk everything marathon training, running, your career and your future career. Um, but first of all, how are you today? Yeah, good thanks and thanks for having me. Ah, you're welcome. <laughs> Looking forward to catching up. Um, okay, so shall we start at the beginning? It's always a good place to start. Shall we start with how you got into running, why you got into running? Yeah, so I started running back when I was about 15 really well. Started before that when I was in year 7 in school, it was always a good way to get out of lessons, cross country and stuff, so any time there was a school cross country race I always went along, uh, but without that was the only time I really ran, because um, I was still playing football as my main sport up until the age of about 15. That's when I watched the Beijing Olympics and I thought, oh, yeah, athletics was pretty cool, so I started going to my local running club, but still playing football at the same time as well. Um, and I was doing both and then gradually I was getting a little bit better at running and the football wasn't quite progressing at the same rate so there seemed to be a lot more opportunities in running and eventually I got selected to run for Wales in the Liverpool Cross Country Challenge when I was 17 I think so I decided to stop playing football then and focus solely on running and yeah since then um, kind of been progressing year on year obviously there's some ups and downs but Head in the right direction, yeah. Okay, great. So cross country was your thing when you were a teenager? Yeah, yeah. it was kind of the easiest um, opportunity to do the sports through school and stuff. There was track races too, but not as many, whereas the cross countries were pretty consistent. So, um, and yeah, I think because it was so different running through the mud, it was quite fun as well um, to do as to start out in the sport, and then obviously you find out about all the different types of races and stuff. So. Um, yeah, that's how I started. Okay, brilliant. I think it's quite um, a common theme that with a lot of elite runners that you start with some sport, yours being football, I know football's quite a popular one, um, but that's really good. And being selected to represent Wales, obviously at such a young age, that must have felt pretty uh, amazing. Yeah, definitely. And it was like, you know, I was nowhere near playing football for Wales, so yeah. it was like a no-brainer for me to focus more on running at that point. And um, yeah, you know, looking back you know Liverpool cross challenges and all that but at the time it felt like it was something amazing so yeah it definitely opened the door for me to start taking it a lot more seriously and I'm glad it did. I love that. Do you still have a good interest in football? Oh yeah definitely I watch every single game but okay. uh, I don't play. Who do you support? Arsenal. Okay yeah. all right not a Spurs fan then. Oh definitely. <laughs> we won't talk about that. Don't talk about that. <laughs> okay fab um, and then when did you start escalating your running and going for marathons, half marathons, how did that evolve? So at the age of 17 I obviously focused solely on athletics but it was still you know not that serious it was just my only sport it was running probably most days but not running twice, not really fully understanding everything about it. Um, I had a good coach down in Carmarthen Harriers um, where I went twice a week and then obviously I was doing the rest of my training just at home. Um, but I would say when I went to university then things got a lot more serious because I was training with people who were a lot older than me, a lot more experienced, people who had much bigger goals than I'd ever even thought of. So that kind of took me to a different world again where I took things a lot more seriously and obviously I was a bit older then, more mature to kind of, you know, run further, run faster, recover better, although not all the time because sometimes the university lifestyle doesn't suit that, but um, yeah, you know, that opened to a, a doors to a lot more competitions again, so um, that was kind of when my training kicked up a notch, but 
I didn't do my first marathon until I was 23 years old, which I was still quite young, but it took me a while from when I started running to actually get to the first one, yeah. So before the marathon, was it kind of 10Ks and, and that distance? Yeah, yeah. so uh, I was racing anything really from 1500 meters on a track to cross country to mountain races to 10K road, half marathons. There wasn't that much focus, I was kind of just doing everything, which maybe, um, you know, uh, stopped me competing quite so well in some races, but uh, it was also really enjoyable because you got to experience so many different things, and that's where I kind of found out what I was good at, what I was not so good at. Great. Okay, Fab, so your first marathon was at 23. Which one was that? Uh, London Marathon was my first one, yeah. London. And how was that? <laughs> yeah, it, was, it went pretty well, to be honest. Uh, better than I was hoping. I was hoping to run under 2.16 which was the Commonwealth Games time for Wales in 2018. Um, this was in 2017. Um, I didn't really know what to expect because it was my first one. You always, you know, the pace doesn't sound too bad, but then it's 26 miles. So yeah, I was probably a little bit naive going in, but it went better than I hoped. So around 2.14, uh, which qualified me for the Commonwealth Games, which was kind of my long-term aim. and then surprisingly qualified myself for both champs as well, which I didn't even really realise until about 22 miles into the race. But uh, yeah, and since then, you know, I've done 10 now. Um, so, you know, some good ones, some not so good ones, but um, yeah, I think trending in the right direction anyway. I mean, it's a, an awesome debut marathon and some fantastic rewards for it. Um, and you say that you've had some good ones and some bad ones, but like you said, it's part of the journey. Yeah. Um, so let's just talk a little bit about when you have the bad marathons, how do you come back from that? How do you use that to go forward to the next training cycle, the next marathon? Yeah, so obviously when you have a, a bad marathon, it's it's a lot worse than having just a bad 10k because you could go and do another 10k like a week or two later and you'll be okay. Whereas a marathon, you've had the whole training block, the race itself, it's a lot to recover from and for me, I can't just go straight into another one. I just I need the recovery time whether it goes well or not um, so it's really frustrating but you kind of just have to let it motivate you and not let it kind of put a downer on things you know you've just got to trust that you are better than that performance and you know try to work out why it didn't go well and then correct those little things for next time and you know I do the same whether it's about 10k half whatever you always try and pick up the positives find out what went wrong and then you know if you can make small adjustments to kind of correct that in the future then that's great yeah i love that i love that even at like your level your elite level that you you have setbacks and you can use them it's not just kind of every race you do you pb you pb um because otherwise we'd all be well we'd all, <laughs> we'll be better than kipchoge yeah yeah i wish that was the case you know pb after pb but you know obviously the quicker you end up running the more difficult it is then wherever your level whether you've just run your first four hour marathon you know it's then difficult to go faster, you've got to train more when you know you need a better day, maybe better field, better conditions. So, you know, it's the same for everyone when you've just done the best you've ever done, it's hard to just keep getting better and better and better. So yeah, you know, you've always got to kind of find the small wins and you know, if things don't go well for whatever reason you just need to not let it get to you, but to work out why and then yeah. see what you can do to improve next time. Yeah, I love that. Use it. It's pure, um, and you're obviously keeping. Um, you're improving, um, obviously, because Seville this year was an amazing time. What was that? Two eleven. Yeah. Yeah. That, what a that was a great race. Yeah, it was definitely my best marathon so far. Time on just the way I executed the race because it was pretty evenly paced. Um, so yeah, you know, conditions there were perfect, and the field was so strong. You know, I feel like I've been in that kind of shape for a couple of years, but. With COVID, you know, opportunities have not quite been there. Like London 2020, which was the elite only race, uh, I was really fit, but it was a bit rainy, a bit windy on that day, no crowd. It was. Oh, it's, it sounded tough. I mean, it was just loops as well, yeah, wasn't it? it was which... 20 laps, I think, of St. James's Park, which yeah. it was flat, but it was quite difficult. So I did PB that day, but it was. I felt like there was more there in better conditions and just with a bit of atmosphere and stuff. So I was really happy with that, obviously. But yeah, then 2021 Olympic Trials Marathon wasn't quite such a good performance. Around 2.15, again, with no crowd. 
And I think after about 12 miles, I didn't pass one person, nobody passed me. It was a very mm. lonely race. Um, so probably not the place to PB, um, unless you're Tomo. Uh, but um, yeah, and then London 2021, it was back to 2.13 again, which I was really pleased with. Came eighth overall, which was my best ever finish in London. Um, and then, yeah, once the chance to do Seville came around, I knew there would be good weather, hopefully in Spain, but a uh, good field as well, because it's lots of chasing World Championship qualifying time. So um, it was just, yeah, perfect everything really. And uh, yeah, it worked out. So what difference, because you touched upon there, you know, racing on your own and how hard it is in a race. Um, I think for us, we're mortals, we don't really get that. But what difference does it make at your standard to have um, a pack to run with, to have people to run with, as opposed to running completely on your own? Yeah, so like London Marathon 2021, I came eighth. I was, you know, really pleased with it. But, you know, the second half, I did pass people, but because of the difference in speed, like, you're never really running with them. You just kind of see them on the road. So, um, you know, it's just nice to have someone to break the wind, someone to, you know, if you're sharing reps on the track, it does make a real difference when there's someone ahead of you. And if you're trying to run, you know, eight miles, 13 miles, 20 miles on your own, it, it can be difficult just to stay as mentally focused as well to keep pushing, keep on the pace, because, you know, you know from your own experience, once you get to like 20 miles, it's easy to lose a bit of concentration and then you've lost a few seconds a mile, which, you know, when you're trying to run really quick it's like you don't have that many seconds to play with anyway it, yeah. so um yeah uh it was just perfect because you can kind of switch off just get in the rhythm of the group especially if there's a pacemaker there it's just ideal really you just switch off mm. um and you kind of see it in cycling where they just kind of draft yeah. it's not quite the same effect in running but you know the uh psychological effect is just nice to be in a group and not have to be on it the whole time have you ever had a pre WhatsApp discussion to do a bit of an Elliot formation? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. Someone picking up my bottles and stuff, but uh, yeah, yeah, no, I just any time there is a group, it's it's a lot easier, I think. Yeah, I mean, it goes to show, obviously, with a different scale, with Kipchoge breaking to the the formation had to be right, the, yeah. the the aerodynamics and everything that was involved in it. So it goes to show the difference at having paces and being in a pack and things like yeah. that, that does. Okay, right, so talking of when you, um, sorry, with your training then, do you train in groups with a club or do you do a lot of it solo? Pretty much everything on my own. Like yeah. I don't live in a big city or anything like that, so there's not that many people around there I could realistically train with all the time anyway um which is quite nice because then any time in a race where there is a group it's always a big bonus for me because i'm so used to running on my own mm. so i probably deal with that in races maybe better than some who are constantly in a group but obviously you know it's sometimes easier to get a uh, train at a higher standard if you can share reps and it's just nice to kind of meet up with people at the track so any chance i do get to train with others i kind of take it I've done a few sessions recently with um, Jonathan Hopkins, who's a steeplechaser, so we don't necessarily do the exact same workout, but we try and, you know, maybe do half the workout together, and then he might split into, like, some speed stuff, and I'll do some long stuff. Uh, but it's just nice to have, like, a bit of social interaction at the track um, before, you know, we each go our separate ways, because we both train on our own, so... Um, yeah, and you know, same on camp, if there's anyone else there doing similar kind of stuff, you try and link in, but I'm also more than happy to do it on my own. Yeah, do you listen to anything when you're running? Do you do podcasts, music? Uh, I don't listen to anything on workouts and stuff, but long run, because I'm going a bit slower, it's nice to just chuck some music on, uh, particularly when I go like really long, because it can be a bit dull otherwise. Yeah. But, um, yeah um, Normally music, uh, like the, I really like listening to podcasts, but just not when I run. I normally listen to that when I work or something, but um, yeah, when I run, just something with a bit of beat. Is yeah. Good. yeah, something a bit more upbeat for you, is yeah. it? Yeah, not chill out acoustic. Maybe if I'm going a recovery run, okay. if I'm trying to keep it Can't up, I need something to keep me going. <laughs> keep me switched on. Yeah. Okay, so should we just touch upon um, what is when you're in a marathon training cycle, what is a typical kind of training week for you? So, mileage-wise, probably between 120 and 130. Um, so, like, a couple of weeks ago, around 130. 
um, before doing Manchester 10k, which maybe didn't help the 10k, but it's tired legs. It just I know I need it for the marathon, yeah, so yeah. like it's just trying to focus on the big goal. It can't take for everything, but um, so yeah, you know, it'll range between that. It kind of depends how long my long run is that week or how long my workouts are. Like, you know, if I'm doing a really long fart like a tempo and you just add a few more miles in the week and if I do a speed workout on the track which is just as hard it's just less mileage but um so yeah I'll do one long run one like medium long run so like 15 16 miles um and then two workouts one will be more speed based and the other one will be like more uh, tempo based yeah and then just lots of easy miles lots of easy miles easy miles for the win do you um what do you when you're doing your easy miles do you go off feel heart rate feel more, yeah mostly um because i like live in a fairly hilly area as well so you can't like pace will go up and down depending you can't really expect it to be even around here so um and heart rate is just not something i've used heart rate in the past but unless you get your zones monitored fairly regularly yes it's not that um you know like you can be in a much fitter place three months into a block than at the start so unless you kind of update the values it can be roughly right but you yeah. know give or take so um and again with the hills hard really shoot up shoot down <laughs> if i'm running up a hill or not so i tend to just go off feel i feel like i'm quite experienced them now to know like what easy feels like what not so easy feels like whereas you know, for some of the people I coach and less experienced people, I would definitely tell them, you know, maybe heart rate's a better kind of gauge or if you can run flat, then go more by pace. Um, but yeah, I just prefer to go feel for easy stuff. Yeah, I mean, you've been ru running long enough now to kind of know, know your yeah. body and know what, what yeah. effort you're working at. Do you think the hills are um, an extra weapon for you with your training around here? Yeah, they definitely get you strong without really, you know, trying to. They can... Sometimes it's hard to get like proper recovery running. Mm. You have to do some laps or something because those you're up some sort of hill or going down and then you have to come back up. But uh, yeah, definitely I really like it and it breaks up the runs as well. It's, it can be a bit boring if everything is flat. So um, yeah, it's really nice and obviously you can get into the countryside a bit so you don't see too many cars either. So um, yeah, it's just really nice to kind of switch off sometimes and go on the lanes. But um, yeah. I, I like the hilly terrain, it um, it breaks things up and you know if you look at the people who are training in Kenya and stuff, it's all really hilly there so I don't see anything wrong with this, good to get you strong. No, uh, I, I agree, I think hills are great if you can get some rolling hills, rolling hills are good, not, yeah. <laughs> not so much mountains yeah. you've got to climb. Amazing and with your, um, say your long run each week, is it kind of, do you do marathon specific stuff in your long run? Do you put some effort segments in there or is it just a steady run? It varies week to week, yeah. like I won't always do marathon specific stuff, I won't always do an easy long run, steady long run, it kind of, I'll try to include a bit of everything yeah. throughout the block. It also depends what kind of races I'm doing, like if I can race 10Ks and half marathons, obviously there's sustained periods where I'm running much quicker than marathon pace anyway, so I kind of view a half marathon as a really good way to train for a marathon because, you know, it's hard to get that sort of effort and distance in just a long run on your own, so, you know, if I do a half marathon race every three or four weeks, then that's kind of like my harder long run because obviously with the warm up and cool down, it'll add up, but, um, so yeah, I try to get up on the hills and, you know, sometimes I'll go really long like on Tuesday this week I did 28 miles um more oh, than a marathon in training and actually you can check out your training is on Strava isn't it yeah it is and what did you title that run uh, stay hard stay hard <laughs> for the Goggins fans yeah. out there um are you a fan of Goggins yeah big fan <laughs> yeah he's a, he's great isn't he like yeah. if I ever feel a little bit like mm, just go onto his Instagram page and watch one of his videos yeah, and I'm like, do you I know what? I love the videos, any time I'm just sitting down and I see one of them, I just have to get up and go for a run or something. Just, uh... Yeah, I think that's one audiobook actually, that um, most audiobooks that I listen to, like, you know, put a bit of Audible in, I'm like plodding along because I'm listening, but when you listen to Goggins, when he's, you know, in his book and yeah. it's like, yeah, I can do this. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, you're, you're very open with your training actually, because you are on Strava, because yeah. a lot of um, elites aren't. On Strava or any platforms like that, do you find um, do 
do you mind being on Strava? Do you find it a hindrance or a help or just pop it's, it on there? It's not really a help. I just put it on if people want to follow, they follow. If they don't, they don't. I don't if someone wants to copy it, they can. Like it's, oh, it's no. up to them. But <laughs> what, I, I wish them luck if they try and copy <laughs> your training. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I've got it mostly for because I follow the, all the people I coach, so I can kind of track the stuff they do. But uh, yeah, I mean, I post it on there. It doesn't bother me that other people see it. Like, if yeah. someone was to copy, they wouldn't get the same results, same as if I copied someone else's. You've got to do what works for you, really. Yeah. Like, um, you know, I know if I copied a more speed based runner's training, I wouldn't run the APBs because yeah. that's not how I train best. So, you know, it's not always the best way to copy, but um, yeah, I mean, it's not so secretive that I can't put it on. Yeah, either. no, no, I agree. I think Strava is great to kind of be nosy and see what everybody's up to and celebrate achievements. Yeah. But as far as training is concerned, I don't think um, you can kind of copy or be too kind of obsessed with somebody's training because it's so individual and yeah. different mm -hmm. sessions, different runs, different heart rates, different zones. Yeah, and you never know the context of it either, yeah. like whether with us in the middle of a huge block or if they've had a really stressful day or what the weather was like or what kind of terrain that was on or... I can't remember actually, somebody, uh, I think it's a female elite from America, she put like what you don't see on Strava and she put kind of like photos from her run <laughs> and it was really bad terrain and yeah. then it was really sunny and she was like that's what you don't see. Yeah, so yeah. you know you don't always get the full picture with it anyway so... Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, okay, and so Seville, you're off to the World Championships in Oregon in July. Yeah. How are you feeling about that? Yeah, really good. I mean, training's kicking up a notch now. There's lots of miles and stuff, but yeah, really looking forward to um, running one World Championship in 2017, and the experience was amazing. Obviously, that was a home champs in London, so it'll be a different experience to go to America and race there, but... Yeah, if I could have pick a country, it would probably be America, so it's pretty Amazing. cool to go there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, we were chatting beforehand, you said you're going to be going out a couple couple of weeks before the event. Yeah, there's a British British Athletics holding camp um, in Oregon, so just go there just to kind of get the travel out of the way, kind of get used to the conditions a little bit. It shouldn't be too different to what's here, really, but um, yeah, it'll just be kind of nice to get in that zone, that atmosphere with the rest of the team and um, yeah, just prepare for the for a couple of weeks then before race day. Anything you're looking forward to watching whilst you're out there? Uh, well obviously I'm on day three I think so it, it, before that I'm not really going to be watching anything mm. uh, apart from when I'm chilling in the room but yeah after I'm hoping to go to the stadium and watch a few things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah you know like women's 1500, women's 8, men's 5k Wherever I can watch it, I'll yeah. watch it. Yeah. yeah enjoy it whilst recovering. Yeah. Um, and I presume you're going for a PB. Yeah, Hopefully. I mean, sometimes, you know, the championship courses, they're a bit different, no pacemakers, it's not always a flat course, because they kind of design it around the city that it takes in some of the sites, like London 2017, it was, they managed to find a couple of hills in London, which I didn't even think were there, they're on St. Paul's and stuff, so it wasn't actually the quickest of courses, but it doesn't really matter, like, as long as I finish as high as I possibly can, I'll be happy. And any time would be a bonus, but um, absolutely. Yeah, main focus is just to finish as high as possible. Yeah, do yourself proud and just make sure you're leaving it all out there the best way you can, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, okay, so what's the plan after Oregon? Um, are you going to do an autumn marathon or London maybe? Um, yeah, so to be confirmed, uh, autumn wise, mm -hmm. I do plan on racing another marathon in 2022, but. The exact one, yeah, is unconfirmed. Like lots of fields, they're just kind of carrying ideas together yet without finalising who's going to be racing where. So I do plan to race one, but I'm not 100% sure which yet. Like I've got to make sure I have enough time after the champs to recover. Yeah. Because I want to be able to run well in whatever marathon I do. And then obviously, if I look further ahead, then to spring 2023, I want enough of a gap before that as well. So. It's just kind of finding the best window to race and then looking at what opportunities fall within the window um, rather than just committing to a race whenever it is and finding out I haven't got enough time or uh, something like that. So yeah, it's just uh, kind of working that out and um, making sure I've got enough time to recover and prepare properly for it um, so I can run a good race. 
Yeah, and then looking in the future, are we looking at Paris? Yeah, obviously that would be ideal. Yeah. Um, Olympics, it doesn't feel so long with the last Olympics delayed, obviously, so you're almost straight into the next quarter qualifying window next January, because mm -hmm. that's when the window will open. So, yeah, you've kind of got three opportunities to run one if you run two a year. So, I guess my first attempt will be to run the time in spring 2023. Yeah. Um, then I'll have another shot in the autumn and then I'm guessing there'll be a trial race maybe in London 2024 or whether they decide to do something else so um, yeah that's definitely going to be the long term aim but there's lots of me to focus on before then too. Yeah, I lots just, of little steps before you get to that big one right? Yeah, I've just got to keep trying to run faster and faster and yeah. you know enjoy along the way too. Um, going back to 10k's for a bit in between? Yeah, so every time between marathons I'll always drop back down because it's good to get you know more comfortable again with running a lot faster, otherwise I just feel like I get a bit slow and marathon pace feels a bit hard. Um, so yeah, anything 5k, 10k, half, anything shorter, it's always good fun because you can just do them a lot more often as well because recovery time is a lot less. So Yeah, yeah. and obviously you're a coach and you've got, you've got your athletes that you coach, but for anybody that's watching this and maybe is stagnant in their own marathon PBs and not getting any faster at the marathon or they're struggling, would you recommend going back and kind of looking at the short stuff, going to back to the 5k, the 10k? Yeah, definitely. I'm taking a little bit of pressure off time as well, sometimes just going back to just racing and enjoying it, doing, you know, sessions with your club maybe or meeting up with friends or just maybe small changes in your training just to make it a little bit more enjoyable and taking the pressure off yourself. Mm. You can just find yourself in a much better rhythm and often, you know, I think a happy runner is usually a faster runner as well than just trying to force things and really getting stressed about what pace you're running all the time. So, you know, sometimes just take your watch off or turn the pace off and just run to feel, you know, you get a much better understanding of what different, you know, paces feel like then and yeah. And then just kind of working out the best way to prepare for the race as well. So don't just go, you know, marathon to marathon, drop off down the distances and work back up. So, you know, I like to tell some of the athletes I coach to kind of aim for a 5k, then we build that to a 10, build it to a half and then up to a marathon. And, mm. you know, it's a nice kind of uh, linear trajectory then rather than trying to re jump. 10k mountain race, half marathon, 5k, it's impossible yeah. to PB in them all. So uh, so not like me, who's at the moment, I'm like, I'm going to PB the half marathon, 10k, 5k, <laughs> and I'm just going to race everything and then go back to marathon training. Be a bit more specific and progress. Yeah, it's not that I'm against them doing all these different races, but it's just like the finding the best way to PB in as many as possible and just you could do all of those races but maybe reject the order or something like that but uh, it also depends on the goal like you can do a race and it, you don't have to aim for a pb every time yeah. you can just it can be just a hard run as part of training or for enjoyment or any number of reasons really yeah and no, i like both of those points i think um definitely like using races as a training run is great because i think as well like from a personal level i find that i've had pbs in those kind of races because you do take the pressure off yeah. you know you're still going to run hard but it's just a training run yeah. <laughs> so you kind of do a little bit better yeah more, better than you think anyway um and obviously the fun aspect is lots of us runners that just kind of do marathons half marathons whatever it is for charity yeah. for personal reasons and that's always good to go and have fun and I guess what you guys miss out on you know like kind of getting the sweets and the high fives and and all of that yeah yeah, you know, even some of the elite guys, you know, it's nice to just kind of race in different places. You get to travel to places you've never been before, meet new people. And yeah, you know, you can still have a lot of fun with it, even though the race, you know, is serious and stuff. You can still have a lot of enjoyment outside that 30 minutes of running or whatever it is. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you know, I think if you're not having fun, then it's like why are you doing, doing it? it yeah 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 absolutely so what's fun for you do you do what kind of i've also got to ask you about your guinness world record in a minute because i'm intrigued by this <laughs> um but what's fun for you in running so obviously training um it's hard and it's hard work um and it's a graft for you guys day in day out um so what keeps it fun for you i like just throwing myself through pain really is a bit weird but like I really enjoy going really long and when you finish in a heap like at the time obviously it feels terrible but 
it's kind of a nice feeling as well that yeah. you know you kind of do that uh, but obviously you can't do that all the time so yeah with races you know I've been really lucky being able to travel the world basically just running so and I know if I had I stuck to football I wouldn't have been to any of these places so yeah you know you kind of got to think on the really hard days that actually the opportunities that come from this they are worth it um and yeah just you know the feeling that you get from racing pushing yourself you know it's like it's really it's just personal really like you either enjoy it or you don't there's yeah. lots of people who run and they hate it and that's okay and they do things that they like that I hate but um yeah, for me, I just really enjoy racing and obviously I get the bonus of the travel and, you know, different opportunities like being on this pod and stuff. So, uh, yeah. yeah, you know, it's a bit more interesting than just working in an office. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's definitely, um, it's, it's, it's life experiences, isn't it, yeah. which you, you can't get in many professions and you can't get in many situations. So, yeah, there is that side to it as well. Yeah. Um, let's talk Asics. Um, you're sponsored by Asics? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what's your favourite training shoe? I do lots of my miles in the Kayano, but yeah. I also like the uh, Nova Blast, just yeah. a lot more bouncy. So I love the Nova Blast. Yeah. Like the Nova Blast, although I've got to say, Nova Blast won the original Nova Blast, I absolutely adore them. Um, yeah. But yeah, they're a really good general shoe, right? Yeah, I just love them. They just give you a lot more pop and stuff like that. So I do lots yeah. of my long runs in the Nova Blast. Um, and then obviously, that Speed Sky for anything where I'm running a bit quicker. Just, yeah, I mean, big fan of a lot of the shoes. Uh, obviously, I haven't tried them all, but um, yeah, those are kind of my three go-tos. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And the Kayano, if I get that right, is it, are they more supportive? Yeah, more supportive yeah, so shoe? I just tend to wear them where I'm running a bit yeah. easier and stuff, just look after my legs a bit. And then when I want to run a bit quicker, an overblast, and then I want to try and run a lot quicker, my speed sky. Okay, great. Um, and th did you go to the Malaga event? I did. You did yeah. yeah. How was that? That I was actually, again another amazing experience, right? Yeah, because you guys are all there. Amazing yeah. experience, and obviously you don't get to see some of the the people because they race five k, ten k. They don't necessarily do marathon, and I don't do five k. So the fact that those all the different events came together was pretty cool. Uh, obviously got to travel to Malaga as well, which is a lovely place. I unfortunately was ill in that week, just terrible cold. It wasn't COVID, I don't think, but um, yeah, so the race, I was still struggling a bit with my chest. Um, it was okay for the first couple of K, but then I just couldn't quite breathe normally, which is a bit of a weird sensation, but um, yeah. yeah, it was just kind of one of those things that happened. Um, and, you know, I bounced back the week after running in London, it's like 45 seconds quicker, so it was easy for me to see that it was just a case of the illness rather than fitness, which was nice, because yeah. it was yeah. a little bit worrying, but yeah, um, experience-wise it was good, but result-wise it's got to be a lot, a lot different. <laughs> you got to take the wins though, the experience was good. You got yeah. to go to Malaga, so we'll take that. Yeah, yeah. But like you said, you know, you can't PB everything. You can't constantly be. Yeah. And, at, and at the moment with your marathon training on tired legs, I, mean, I'm, I'm, I can only imagine that your legs must be fried half the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no tape, but it's, it's quite hard. Yeah, I mean, I was hoping to run quick. That it was just an unfortunate time with illness. Um, and I think that was the main reason that it kind of stopped me running. Well, maybe it wouldn't have been a PB day, who knows. But I feel like I would have run much better race and you know one that I would be happier with uh, at least because it was just uh, difficult I couldn't I just didn't feel like myself racing mm. whereas the week after it was a much better experience yeah. Um, but yeah I mean not every race is going to be great and you know in the grand scheme of the year I would rather a race where it's not like a major marathon or world championship or something would to go bad than mm. you know the eagle kind of so um, yeah definitely yeah. absolutely right let's talk about a guinness world record right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so what was it it was bouncing a tennis ball how far did you do it a mile a mile and how quick did you do it 532 how <laughs> how so what was it what were the terms the t's and c's did you have to keep it constantly bouncing yeah i had to keep it constantly bouncing and if it dropped on the floor the the record was over I had to start again like oh. the whole mile so uh the ball had to be constantly bouncing and I did it on a track indoors so it was quite tight wow. but um, it was nice to have no wind at least. Okay so a couple of questions, how do you train for an event like that? I didn't, it was a week <laughs> after Seville so okay. 
I went to the astro turf a couple of times just to see if I could actually lap it up and down, but uh, I could. But, I thought um, it was some hidden talent that you had that, you know, that when, when you're recovering in between your runs and you're, you're chilling out for the day that you're just sat there coaching, balancing a ball. No, um, I used to enjoy playing tennis when I was like 14, 15 down the park, but I can't say I've played much since. So yeah, it was a bit of a random one because um, I speak Welsh. I suppose see the Welsh TV channel. Got in touch to see if I wanted to try and break a record along with lots of other people doing different things. So I said, yeah, okay. <laughs> then they said seven days after Seville was the last time I could do it. So I was like, okay, <laughs> um, I'll give it a go. And yeah, my legs just about recovered to wow. try. <laughs> It was it's insane. Like <laughs> for people that can't even run a mile normally, that that speed, yeah. you know. But with doing it with them, did they give you a choice of events? The, yeah, they did. I did because there was somebody wanging a chicken. Yeah. Yeah. So mine was going to be more running based because I'm a runner, um, and I thought that would be the, my best chance uh, of doing one. So I actually tried another one as well to run a mile with a book on my head, which went terribly. Oh wow! What, closed or? Uh, yeah, okay. it was just closed and I had to balance it on my head which was just impossible yeah so that went terribly but um yeah I, I did the tennis the te tennis was the best option I think I'd probably go with the tennis tennis racket yeah, yeah the ball but that's pretty cool yeah it was again just completely different experience and um yeah, it was a pretty cool one to try. I'm just glad it worked. <laughs> <laughs> it worked. You got the record, and yeah, yeah I, I, think I, I did enjoy. I saw little snippets of the other people as well doing records, and it was, it did have me um, giggling. Yeah. I think especially the chicken. I think there was some kind of like short clip of the chicken just going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Arlet, he's like a world record shot putter. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's just flinging <laughs> the chicken, but uh, so he got the record as well for that, which is pretty cool. Ah, oh, it's all good fun, yeah. all good fun. So, um, if you could give anybody watching, going for their first marathon or their 10th marathon, whatever it is, what is your best bit of marathon training advice? Um, I think just have a clear distinction between what's a hard day and what's an easy day. Like, you know, for some people an easy day will be total rest, but I think just making sure that your easy runs are easy enough so you recover so that you know, some of the long runs and the workouts, they're really tough. And obviously, depending on what your goal is, you'll do, you know, more long runs, more workouts. You know, it'll depend. But I think just making sure your easy days are easy mm -hmm. is really important, you know, no matter what level you're at. If the top elite guys are just really jogging on their easy days, then there's no reason for anyone else to be pushing it on. Uh, I think that's a mistake a lot of people make, just thinking they need to do everything fast to to run faster whereas it's not true um do you think um like strava ego comes into that a little bit with some people maybe yeah i think so you know yeah. you always some people love the kudos and stuff like that because they've run maybe five miles further than they were meant to or they've run a minute a mile quicker than somebody else but um yeah i mean it's not really worth it when then the race doesn't go well so um yeah you're only shortchanging yourself there I guess. Yeah, yeah and even if you're not on strava and you're just trying to be competitive with yourself which you know i kind of like i do it myself too but again you regret it when then you're just tired on race day so i think it's just picking your battles and um kind of prioritizing the days where you need to feel good so yeah. that you can feel good on them otherwise you're just going to constantly tired and you never recover that makes me think of um, John McAvoy, um, and he was on about training for his um, for Ironman, and he hadn't run marathons, and he was running a marathon every Sunday um, in his training, but he was getting quicker every week, and then yeah. until he completely burnt out, and that was that was that. But being competitive with yourself, yeah, that that aspect of it is definitely um, easy days easy. It's such an important one. I think it's something that no matter who I speak to, it across the board, it's a message that is so important. Yeah, like I think having coached a lot of people, that's you know one thing that can be sometimes really difficult to get across is that if you slow down, you can actually end up running faster because you can hit the key days a lot harder because you just feel so much better. You're not doing everything under a state of fatigue. Yeah, 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 no, absolutely. Okay. I've had to take myself to the trails on my easy days because I have to, even sometimes just walk up a hill to keep my heart rate down yeah. or whatever, but go to the trials because if I go on the road and it's flat, I'm like, oh, it's kind yeah. of inviting. But yeah, so try and find something that makes you just back off a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, okay, brilliant. 
and for you now what's your ultimate goal going forward when when are you going to feel like yeah I've, that's what i wanted yeah i mean i think you've always got to keep pushing the bar whenever you hit a goal don't be happy with it just set another one which is even harder um so yeah you know i've got lots of different goals i don't just have one otherwise you know it's you can achieve so much stuff but if you haven't achieved that one you can feel like you failed so you know, I've got lots of different ones that I want to do through my career, whether they run certain races, make them Olympic Games, you know, go to one World Championships, then go to two World Championships, then three, then four. So, you know, there's lots of stuff you want to do, but obviously I think Olympics is kind of everyone's dream. And I think if anyone says they weren't, then they're probably lying. But uh, yeah, you know, but, you know, it's it wouldn't be a failure if I didn't. There's still lots of other things I can do, but... That's definitely where I'm going to be working towards before uh, 2024. Yeah, and you're young enough anyway to go again after the Paris qualifying, right? Yeah, I mean... If worst so. comes to worst, <laughs> hopefully not. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, I think, you know, in terms of marathons, I'm still fairly young when I see some of the others I'm racing against, but also you never know what can happen, you mm. know, it can be a by a car or something, so... Uh, yeah, you kind of got to make the most of any opportunity you can get. find some wood. Don't go, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. But, uh, yeah, you know, I think if one, th you know, you've learned one thing through COVID is that you never know what can happen and, yeah. you know, you could be in amazing shape and then there's no races for two years or something. So make the most of any opportunity you can get, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and these big goals setting the goals along the way really important for you for your athletes for if, if an athlete comes to you and says i've got this massive goal i want to do this run x time at such a distance but they're quite far away would you be like right let's find some goals along the way yeah de you? definitely you know it, it can be really difficult to you know improve by a massive amount so finding like little stepping stones along the way is really good like you know, I like to think of it as, you know, a flight of stairs, you're trying to get from the bottom to the top, you're never going to do it in one go, you kind of need all those little steps along the way um, to get you to the top. And yeah, you know, if someone's trying to run a three hour marathon and they're on 3.30, then first of all in for 3.20, then 3.15, or maybe you can do the jump, but you need to run a faster half marathon first. Mm -hmm. So it's just finding little ways to help you get from A to B. Um, yeah. And you know that could be a range of different things, but smaller goals along the way to help you get to the big one is always a good way to go. I think. I like the analogy of the stairs. I like that very much. I shall remember that. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. Please do go check out Josh's social media page. I will put his Instagram link below and also links to his run coaching website. Uh, you've not got spaces at the moment, um, but have you got a waiting list? Yeah, and you know, I'll do my best to fit in anybody who wants to join, so yeah. Get in touch with Josh and he will direct you or advise you. But I will put all of Josh's details below. Do follow along at the World Champs. Is what's that before the World Champs, anything? Um, nothing at the moment, just lots of training and maybe I'll do one race, but main aim is just to prepare for the marathon, so uh, yeah. All geared towards Oregon, so please do go and show your support. I love it. Thank you very much and we're going to go now and have a little run. I'm going to tag along on Josh's run and uh, he's going to show me some sights around Hunethli. Is that right? <laughs> <It's> close, <laughs> enough. close enough. <laughs> I really hope that you enjoyed that episode. Please do like, share and subscribe and check out the previous episodes of Run With. I will be back next week with another episode to bring you. Until then, happy running. Bye.